Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Sean Carbanda. So have you been using your iPad and then you realize that your iPad has become laggy and you want to know some tips and tricks. So you've come to the right place. Keep watching the entire video. So the first thing you want to do is slice out any apps that you aren't using. So all you have to do is double tap the home button and then simply swipe out all the apps. Next thing you want to do is turn off background app refresh. So to do that, go to your settings app, then go to general. And then here, when you're in general, scroll down to where it says background app refresh, click on it. And you want to turn that off. Basically, background app refresh will allow apps to refresh their account when they're connected to Wi-Fi or cellular. And this will basically help improve battery life and it will reduce lag. So just turn that off. Or if you don't want to turn off using the master switch, you can simply turn it off for, for some applications which you don't use. But since I do not want it for any of the apps, I'm going to turn it off for all of them. Now, a similar thing that you're going to do is related to the mail. So you're going to scroll down to where it says mail, contacts, and calendar. And here where it says fetch new data, so you're going to remove that. And then here you want to click fetch, and then you're going to just click on manually. So basically what this will do is basically whenever you now open the app, it will fetch for new mail. Before, it was constantly pinging the servers and checking if there's any new mail. So you want to turn that off. Also, on a side note, I made a similar video for the iPhone on how to save battery life for your iPhone. And if you want to check out that video, I'll just link in the card right here and also in the description below. So make sure to check that out. So now the third thing that we're going to do is we're going to reset our history for Safari. So we're going to go to Safari and we're going to scroll down to where it says clear history and website data. Do know that it's going to delete any of your website data that you may have stored, but deleting your Safari history and data once in a while will help improve the entire experience on your iPad. So click on that and then click clear and then that's cleared. Now what you're going to do is reduce all the animations and get rid of all the effects. So as you can see right here, with all these effects, whenever you're using the iPad, they greatly take up a lot of battery and they also make your iPad a whole lot more laggy. So what you're going to do is just go to settings and then go to general again and then go to accessibility. And then where it says reduce motion, click on that, turn that on. So it reduces the motion of other interfaces, including the parallax effect of icons. So now let's click on the home button. As you can see, there's no animations. That's good. That'll make the experience less laggy. So then what you're going to do is scroll down to where it says increase contrast and turn on reduce transparency. Okay, once you have done that, you're going to also restart your RAM once in a while. So what you're going to do is in accessibility, click on assistive touch, turn that on. So once you've turned on assistive touch, what you're going to do is hold the power button for five to 10 seconds. And this will basically prompt the dialog where you're going to power that device off. Instead of powering it off, what you need to do is click on the assistive touch button. And then you just want to simply hold the home button right here. Press and hold on the home button for five to 10 seconds. And as you can see, you'll be landed on the home screen of your iPad, which basically means that the RAM has restarted and is cleared up. So the next tip you're going to do to lower your iPad lag is you want to basically change the keyboard, the default keyboard. So as you can see, if we go here and if we type something, I'm not using the Apple keyboard by default. The reason why I'm not using the Apple keyboard by default is because the Apple keyboard is too laggy and so half the time it does not even work for me. So what I'm actually using is another keyboard by Microsoft. It's called Swift Key. And it has also a lot of other cool gestures which help out where you can just type by swiping the keys. And it's overall helps you a lot with your typing, increases the speed of typing. So what you need to do to download this is very simple. So the way to download this is you're gonna to go to the app store. And once you go to the app store, what you need to do is simply search up Swift Key. And as you can see, there's this application right here. And if you see, it says that it requires iOS 11 and higher. But you're wondering if your iPad can only run iOS 9 or something like that, how can you download this? So now that's a good time to check on my other video right here, where I showed you guys how you can download the, all the new applications on your old iPad. So this is how I got applications like this, SwiftKey, and all the other later applications, such as Hangouts, Discord, Instagram, Reddit, and all that, which require iOS 11 or higher on my old iPad. So make sure to check out that video, which where I will show you step-by-step -step on how to download these new type of applications. So so once you've downloaded the new the Swift key application, what you want to do is go to your back to your settings and you want to go to general and click on keyboard. And here you want to click on keyboards. You want to click on add keyboard. Since for me, I already have the Swift key keyboard added right here. I already have it added right here. I'm going to click on it. And then you want to click on allow full access. So once you've allowed full access, and then if you go to your messages, 
And if you start typing, by default, you'll see the Apple keyboard. But instead, what you're gonna do is click on the globe icon right here and then press on it and hold it for a couple of seconds and then you will get the swift key keyboard and then basically you want to use that so yeah, as you can see if you can just actually swipe with it so like that it's really cool and it's way faster than the apple keyboard that's one good thing about the swift keyboard okay so once we have that out of the way the next thing i want to do is remove the gestures like these gestures so just turn that off so go to your settings Go back to general, go to here, and then just turn off gestures. So that will make the iPad less laggy. So the next thing you need to do to lower the lag for your iPad is that you want to basically turn off notifications for applications that you rarely use. So go to your settings again. This time, go to notifications. And whichever apps you do not need notifications, turn that off. For example, I do not need notifications for weather. I'm just going to turn that off. So for certain applications like your messages, I strongly recommend that you turn on notifications. But since I don't use this iPad that much, I use my iPhone more, there's no use of having notifications on. But if you use your iPad a lot, I strongly recommend that you do not turn off notifications for crucial apps such as messages. Anyways, once you have done that, all you have to do is go to your privacy and then for location services, just turn that off because you basically don't need your location services for your iPad. because. It's not like you're traveling with your iPad every single day to another country. So just turn that off. And once you've done that, you can just slice out of it. So the next thing they're gonna do is turn off spotlight search. So as you may know, spotlight search is basically where you can just swipe down and then type anything and it will search for an app or search for the web. You wanna turn that off because that actually increases the lag on your iPad as it puts a toll on your battery and the RAM. So what you wanna do is open up your settings app, go to general and click on spotlight search. And then you basically you just want to turn it off for all these applications right here. Once you've done that, simply slice out of it. So the next couple of things that I'm about to say are not really tips, but more of a general advice. So basically you don't want to use the Safari web browser since it does not work well with iOS 9. Instead you want to use web browser like Google Chrome or Opera, which work way better on the old iPad. So if you're wondering, how do I get Google Chrome or Opera on my old iPad since they require the latest iOS? So once again, I'll refer you to my other video where I show you guys how you can download these new applications on your old iPad. So that link will be in the description below. Anyways, make sure you power off your iPad once in a while when you're not using it. So this will obviously restart the device and will clear any minor problems that you may have in the iPad. So with that being said, hopefully these tips and tricks helped you and now your iPad is working slightly faster and it's less laggy. And if it did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below if you have any questions and make sure to share this with your friends and family and check out my other videos which are linked on screen and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.